Just got an incident come through of a dog in the Midlands area. You able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel, aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. On today's show, we'll be shining a light on the dark side of breeding and the inspectors that are fighting to stop pups like these guys being farmed for profit. We'll also be meeting some special dogs that survived the horrors of a puppy farm and are now living in happy, loving homes. What should we do now? I promise, no juggling. Coming up. Oh, that stinks. Two dogs living in a cold and dirty shed are rescued from a puppy trafficker. So this one, again, back in its washing up bowl, probably because that's the warmest place for it. The miraculous recovery of two bald and defenceless Lassa Apso puppies dumped in a garden. They must have been absolutely freezing. If they'd have been found any later, they might not have been with us today. Hello. And I'll be finding out what happens when breeding for looks goes too far. It's a freezing December morning, and Inspector Pippa Boyd of the RSPCA's Special Operations Unit is heading for Bolton. She's on the trail of a suspected puppy trafficker who's known to sell dogs online. And today, they're raiding three addresses he's linked to. At one address, there's a male there who's selling puppies. Another address, we believe puppies are being kept there. And then a third address, we believe they're breeding and selling puppies. The unit are investigating reports that the pups he's been selling are very unwell. We've had 10 complaints and nine of those complaints, the puppies have died. Sickness, diarrhea, and a lot of them have had parvovirus. The police are executing the warrants on all three addresses for Pippa and her colleague, Chief Inspector Mike Butcher. Police on the door! There's just one lady in. Okay. Uh, are there any puppies yeah, here? Okay. There's no puppies. He's only got in the garden at the moment. The woman inside is the mother of the suspect. She says there are two of his dogs in the garden. So we're just going to get some gloves, etc., um, and then go and have a look and see what we find in the garden. But first, precautions need to be taken against the killer parvovirus, which can be common in situations like this. It's just for us to dip our feet. It stops the spreading of parvovirus. When we go into a location like this, it's usually important um, that disease control is put in place. Things like parvovirus, that can spread so quickly between litters of puppies. The virus can stay in that environment for a long time. Can you just make sure that anyone who comes we that's been, the been in the back washes their feet? So just got to go through the back gate and see what we find. So we've got some crates here, which is typically where puppies would be kept. Obviously, no protection. They're out in the rain. They're dirty, but no puppies. But there are some adult dogs here, and Pippa's nose tells her she's getting closer. Oh, that stinks. And it... <laughs> Absolutely reeks in here as well. Inside, she finds two sad looking females who could well be the mothers of sold litters. They do have food, 
but really dirty conditions. Um, there's feces everywhere. All the feces here, it's all got mould over. So these haven't been cleaned out for ages, which is why it absolutely stinks. Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? The man they're investigating passed himself off as a reputable breeder, advertising online and offering to deliver puppies to their new owners. A pug puppy can fetch up to £1,500. Whenever we go in on a puppy job where legal puppy farming is involved, we just know that the conditions that we go in will be horrendous. You know, they won't have heating, they won't have adequate light. It's shocking how they think that they can keep their animals, especially in a case like this where people are profiting a lot of money from selling dogs. It is always a sad story. It's just sickening. It's so easy just to clean them out, especially if you've got puppies here and you know disease gets spread and you're selling puppies and you're making a lot of money out of puppies. Just to not be bothered to just clean up and to prevent disease is just so frustrating. The dogs cannot stay in these appalling conditions. So we've definitely got Section 9 offences not yeah. meeting the needs. There's no sign of the suspect at the other two addresses where Mike has been busy gathering evidence. So my colleague just found this pile here, obviously of uh, burned stuff, but a lot of it is uh, dog stuff, basically discarded bowls, burnt bedding. And on the back here, two, three, four, five or six discarded food and water bowls. This is all vital evidence for any prosecution the RSPCA may pursue, and it seems there's more proof of pups being sold inside. We sell adverts online selling pups for sale and uh, distinctive features there, so when they compare what's in the house for the photographs. And Pippa might just have found a match. Yeah. So this advert corresponds with this corner, so I believe that is this address. But now it's time to free the adult dogs from the shed. So it's just a high-risk area, so we need to get them out of there. First out is the little crossbreed. All right, gorgeous. All right. So this one, again, back in its washing up bowl, um, probably because that's the warmest place for it. OK. You go, come out. <sighs> Scratching constantly. The pug is very vocal, but I bet she's pleased to be out of there. All right, go on, then you get it. Two adult dogs have been moved from that address. Both other addresses, there's evidence of puppies being there, um, but today there's no puppies. But the likelihood is disease is in all the properties. There's no doubt the conditions have had an adverse effect on the two dogs, so a vet check can't come soon enough. Hello, little one. Inspector Pippa Boyd has just rescued two dogs from a suspected puppy trafficker. Though no live pups were found, these two adult females could well have had litters that had been sold on. Go on, little you can jump on if you want. Come on, will you come? They're now going to be examined by vet Sean Taylor. He's starting with the pug they've named Phoebe. A bit of a, see dirty ears there, contaminated with, I would imagine that's our environment contamination from what you've said. They're quite mucky, those. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Both dogs are very itchy a sign they may have parasites. Oh, is that good? Something crawling about in there. That's what's causing them to itch, can you see? Can you see there's one there and one there? We've got some lice in there. Lice thrive on dogs that are poorly cared for, like Phoebe. She needs anti-parasitic drops to help get rid of them. Let's get that underway as quick as we can. 
a friend of little things, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. A few earmarks down there as well. So again, that's probably par for the course. That um, spot on that we've had treats earmarks, but I'm going to give you some eardrops as well, which will just uh, just settle down the irritation a bit quicker. Next for examination is the other dog who's been named Patsy. With dogs, they're very contagious, so I'm expecting to find the same external parasites on this one that we found on the last one. Let's have you up on there. Oh yeah. You can see the crusty lesions that we've got in here. See how it causes the itching. Let's see what we've got there then. The issue that you've got with things like lice and mites is they get embedded within the skin. Certainly the amount of crust that we've got coming away from this skin is indicative of uh, external parasites. Patsy will need the same treatment as Phoebe to help with her itchiness. They smell very malodorous. The, um, the coats were very sticky, which is often uh, due to uh, some form of contamination from the environment. More often than not, it's faeces and urine. It's an environment that's been sort of ingrained within their, uh, down to their skin, so it's something that they've been housed in uh, for a reasonable period of time. Both dogs will continue their treatment at kennels. I'll be having to interview the owner of all the dogs, but the investigation continues. We'll catch up on Phoebe and Patsy's recovery later. We've seen that there are unscrupulous people out there willing to cash in on high-value breeds with little regard for their welfare. But that's not the only issue these designer dogs face. For well over a century, many purebred and pedigree dogs have been bred to look a certain way, regardless of the resulting health issue. And perhaps one of the worst affected is the iconic bulldog, as Angelica Bell has been finding out. Flat-faced breeds such as bulldogs and pugs are becoming hugely popular in the UK, but they're in trouble. Their shortened muzzles result in more soft tissue being packed into a tighter space, so many of them struggle to breathe. This, combined with their other health problems, mean that some of these dogs are born into a lifetime of suffering. I'm here at the Royal Veterinary College in Hertfordshire, where they have a specialist clinic helping these broken dogs. Anna? Yes, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Yes. Yeah. This is this Rosa, obviously? Yes, yes. Hello. David and Anna Chandler have brought along their British bulldog, Rosa, for an operation to help her breathe. How are you feeling? I'm um, a bit nervous. We'll see how it goes today. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll get it sorted. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Hi, Rosa. Hello, cheeky one. You OK? Hi, I'm Linda. Anna. Rosa suffers from a condition known as Brachycephalic Obstructive Airway Syndrome, or BOAS for short, and specialist vet Linda Rutherford will be performing the procedure later on today. When she was younger, she would be able to walk for, for an hour, two hours, and she would really enjoy herself. So how far is she able to walk at the moment? I would say we take her for 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes, subject to the weather. How long does it take her to recover? Anything from two to six hours. Oh, wow. Good to yeah. show just how much Rosa struggles with her breathing, we're taking her for a short walk. So what we're going to do is walk Rosa up and down as much as she wants to do in six minutes, and we'll look at her heart rate, her breathing rate, and her temperature afterwards. OK. OK, you ready? Mm -hmm. OK, that's good. Well, she's quite quick. I think she will slow down. She'll slow down in a bit, yeah. And you can really hear her breathing. Yes. It's hard going for poor Rosa. Rosa, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You can do it. Great. She's off. I don't know if she can actually keep walking at a fast pace for any period. Her heart rate before was 88 or so, and now it's 130. So it has gone up quite a bit. I mean, it sounds like she's in a lot of distress, but I think it, it can be really distressing for them. It's as if they're breathing through a straw and trying to exercise with hardly any, any airflow. Good girl. Rosa is clearly in desperate need of help, and I want to find out exactly what brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome really means. It's essentially because of her muzzle or nose has been foreshortened, so the bones of the skull are too short, but she still has all this soft tissue. So you can see, like, um, she's got this facial fold. Her nostrils are very, very narrow. Is that why she's breathing like that, with her tongue out and stuff? Because yes. she's just finding all these diff yeah. difficulties to get the air around. Exactly. 
This is a CT scan of a Labrador. Nice long muzzle here. Black is air on this CT. This is the flow for the air. And then this, in comparison, is a French Bulldog. Ah. So you can see already, like, the nose is so short. It's got no space. One of the things that we address in the surgery is to basically take away part of the soft palate to try and make it end about there, which is much more appropriate. Breeding for looks has created other problems in Bulldogs too. They have the highest rate of hip dysplasia of any dog, and over 80% of pups need to be delivered by caesarean section due to their oversized heads. So, Linda, your plan today is obviously to make it easier for her. Yeah. You can't get rid of the problem, but you can make it... No. ..make her life just a little bit more enjoyable. Exactly. I hope that then she can have a bit more quality of life, like enjoying running in the park and, and doing normal doggy things. You've got a big day ahead, haven't you? Shall I take you home? I'll take me home. I'll take me home. Although there are responsible breeders out there, there are others who are most definitely not. Our next story involves pups that were dumped because they'd lost their fur, so couldn't be sold on. On a wet, cold night in Bradford, a man was caught on CCTV tipping two tiny puppies out of a carrier bag into a front garden. When they were found, the puppies, thought to be Lassa Apsos, were in a terrible state. With 90% fur loss, the pair, named Pippin and Purdy, were taken to an animal centre, where they'd been under the watchful eye of animal care assistant Georgie Meeks. We're in the isolation unit here because they do have a skin condition which, as of yet, we don't know whether it's contagious. Because the pup's skin condition is still undiagnosed, Georgie has to wear a special protective suit before she can have any contact with them. There we are. Ready to play. Come on out then, guys. Come on then. <laughs> Ow, that's my finger. They were dumped by a gentleman at about half past nine on a, a cold night. And they were left out on their own for about six hours. And as you can see, they haven't got any fur. They must have been absolutely freezing. If they'd have been found any later, they might not have been with us today. It doesn't bear thinking about what these tiny pups have already been through at such an early age. When they first came in, they were really quite nervous quite shivery for quite a few days until they settled in and realised they were safe and being well looked after. <laughs> but two weeks after being rescued, thankfully Pippin and Purdy are starting to show signs of progress. Since they've been in, their personalities have come on so much. They've just got little characters, they're really naughty. No, no, it's over and under and make a little halt. Hey! The fur actually has started to grow back in a bit. You can see hers has come on on a head and he's got quite gingery on top. <laughs> I do actually call them my little gremlins. It's an affectionate term, though. <laughs> as well as playing with these two every day, Georgie needs to give them regular medicated baths. Ooh, bath time. Hang on a minute. Thought you weren't made to get gremlins wet. So, normally, this type of puppy, being lasso apsos, would be complete fluff balls. Like, head to toe, just lovely, fluffy fur. Good man. Are you ready? OK. At the moment, we're not entirely sure what the condition is. It could either be Demodex, uh, which is quite easy to treat, or it could be Sarcoptic Mange, which is contagious and is a lot harder to get rid of. Mange is a parasitic infestation that, without treatment, can cause serious health problems. So we do these baths once a week and we will continue doing them indefinitely until we see a vast improvement in the skin condition. Right, are you done? We'll leave that on for 10 minutes and you can just have a little run around whilst, whilst the shampoo's working. Yay, freedom. He's off. Your turn, Purdy. <laughs> Look at me. She's like, no, not me. OK. No escape, Purdy. 
The first time I bathed them, they both screamed when I poured warm water on them. I think it came as a bit of a shock. Yeah, well, they've seen gremlins. Purdy looks pretty resigned to her fate now. Sorry, little and it's for the best. It'll make your fur grow back quicker. Caution. Puppies are slippery when wet. <laughs> Get your excuses in early. Come on, then. Are we going to have to pick you up? No, no. I have been in already. Come on. Can you rinse all that shampoo off? Me? Hey? I'll bundle you up in a nice fluffy towel. Not that fluffy. Do you want to go back in your bed now? Yeah? Oh, boy. Exhausting, all that bathing. Good morning. So they're not on any other treatments at the moment apart from their Malisev baths. You ready for the burrito? In a couple of weeks, they'll both get their puppy vaccinations and routine flea and wormer. And hopefully then, after their baths, that'll be it for them and they'll be uh, fighting fit. Right, should we go and join your brother? Yeah? Come on then. Have a good nap, you two. We'll see you later. Good night. Also coming up... Hello, boys! Hello! Inspector boys. Hershey Bowl is reunited with two pups born after a raid on a puppy farm. They're doing brilliantly. They look amazing, you know. You know, you think of where they could have ended up. It's just incredible. So that's the massive soft palate. And Rosa the Bulldog goes under the knife for her life-changing op. And I'm going to aim to cut to there. In December 2015, Inspector Hershey Bowl was involved in a raid on a puppy farm on the outskirts of Birmingham. Puppy farming is a, it's a huge problem. It's, it's become increasingly big with the internet, really. It's become a, an actual business now. There's six in here, about five in there. Members of the public raised the alarm after several puppies bought from the farm later died from the highly contagious parvovirus. These are not pet dogs. They are literally just being farmed. They're used for breeding. It's quite obvious that that's what they, the, the purpose is that, really. In total, 37 dogs were seized that day, and nine were confirmed as pregnant. Many of them went on to have healthy pups in the charity's care. But others from the farm weren't so lucky. Prior to the raid, Tom Mather unsuspectingly bought two puppies online and became another victim of this terrible trade. Found the uh, Westy puppies for sale. It was fairly local. I contacted them um, and so after a couple of days, then I went around to see them and I came home with, with the two of them. They were sick and, and stuff on the way home. I just put that down to them just being sort of just being recently wormed and being unsettled from being away from their mum. And they were just constantly being sick and diarrhoea. Worried Tom made several visits to the vet with the two pups. He'd named Ben and Max. The last trip to the vets, they did the tests for parvovirus and it was positive. And, and unfortunately then, they, they were put to sleep. It's a really sad thing to say, isn't it? But it's, that, that is the, uh, that is what happens when you buy dogs online. You don't really know what, what you're getting. Thanks to evidence given by Tom and many others, the puppy farmers were found guilty of causing unnecessary suffering. One was jailed for six months, while the other got a suspended sentence of 22 weeks. Between them, they were ordered to pay costs of £45,000. Both have been banned from keeping dogs for life. I was really happy with the result. It's the biggest investigation that I've dealt with, you know, in, in, in my whole time as an inspector. It literally almost killed me, but I was so determined to see it through. Oh, hello. And I'm really glad that I did. But that wasn't the end of the story for Tom. Hershey said, you know, they've got all these puppies that have been born, and would I be willing to foster them? And, you know, I jumped at the chance. He chose two lucky pups from different litters, and Tom named them George and Archie. So here we've got Archie and George. 
Uh, they both just turned two years old. Their mothers were rescued from the original uh, puppy farming case. These were born in RSPCA care about a month to the, the raid on the farm. Archie, sit. Sit. Good boy. Archie's very inquisitive. He's always into everything. He's always sleeping with one eye open and one ear pinged up. But George is just like a little lizard. He'll just lie down and just spark out and be asleep for hours. And he's a little pudding. We should go for a walk. Come on, George. Looks like a no from George. Takes a bit of encouragement from Archie, Tom and his partner Jack to get him out of the house. Come on then, boys. Quickly. Come on then. Archie wants to go, go, go all the time. Uh, and George just likes to take his time. Come on, George. It's quite a relief, really, knowing that these guys have got such a good lifestyle now compared to what they, they potentially could have had. Oh, they've landed on their four little paws, both of them. The second I said yes, I'd foster them, I knew I'd be keeping them forever. There was never, never any question or any doubt. And today, Tom and Jack have got a special surprise in store for their boys. They're about to be reunited with the inspector who rescued their mum, Hershey Bob. Hiya. Hey, hi. All right. How are you? Good, you? Thank you. Good to Great see you. To see you. Hello, boys. Hello. Oh, we've had a haircut. Have and the boys haircut? look very pleased oh, to you see are her. looking posh. So, how have they been? How have you been getting on? Yeah, Pierce? really good. Little monkeys keep us busy. Yeah, oh, look at him. Look like butter wouldn't melt. But I'm, I'm so grateful, you know, so very grateful for, for you fostering them in the first place. They're doing brilliantly. They look amazing. And, you know, you think of where they could have ended up. Let me see how much training you've had. You're going to sit? Oh, you will do it. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. Right, I shall leave you in peace. Take Thanks care. Thanks so much. You know, when you, when you start a sort of multiple a puppy farming war and, and you know it's going to end up kind of taking over your life, you can only dream of this moment. Go on then. It just makes the whole thing worthwhile for me. You can just see how much Tom and Jack adore them. They're having their absolutely great life. It's what they deserve. You good boys. Mm. If you're dead set on getting a puppy, there are some important things to look out for. And here to give me some helpful advice is the RSPCA's Lisa Hens. This dog is called Paul. Is that an appropriate name for a dog, <laughs> do you think? If he likes it, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> so it goes without saying that if you want a puppy, you go to your local rescue centre, right? But if you're not going to do that, what should you do? If you are going to buy a puppy, then the key is to do loads and loads of research. Things like making sure you go and visit the puppy in the place that they were bred and reared at least twice. And what you're looking for is signs that the puppy has actually been bred there and not just shipped in for the purpose of your visit. So things like food and water bowls, bedding, toys. Make sure you see the mum and the puppies interacting together and all of the information about the mum, what health test she's been screened for. This is the dog's mum, not the breeder's mum. <laughs> the dog's mum, yes. They bring their own mum out. Bit weird. No good. Yeah, bit weird. So the dog's mum. These Pomeranians are a high value breed, I'm told. Yeah, How so much are you going to pay for Paul? You can buy a Pomeranian puppy for up to £2,000. So what? they're an awful lot of money, yeah. So it's just so essential that wherever you buy a puppy from, Paul, do your research. Paul, you're coming with me. <laughs> but these are dogs that people will breed for profit. Look at him. Oh, bless him. But not all breeders are dodgy, though, are they? No. There are some nice ones. There are. And they'll put so much effort into making sure their puppies go to good homes. So there are good breeders out there. It's just a case of finding them and doing your research. Good tips. Now back to Angelica at the Royal Veterinary College. Bulldog Rosa has a condition called brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, which means she's struggling to breathe. Vet Linda Rutherford is about to perform surgery on her palate and nose to help her take in more air, so Rosa has been prepped and intubated. So this is the tube that we've managed to fit in Rosa today. So it's actually like very narrow for the size of her. Yeah. This is the tube that we would normally use for a weight equivalent dog. So such as like a Springer Spaniel or something like that. One that's really athletic, has a much larger airway. Um, larger Which really airway illustrates how difficult it is for her to breathe. Yeah, I know, like what she has to face. Boas is believed to affect almost 50% of the bulldog population. The numbers of registered bulldogs have almost doubled over the last 10 years, and numbers of its French cousin have increased 30-fold. 
so it's set to overtake the Labrador as the UK's most popular breed. That's the massive soft palate, and I'm going to aim to cut to there. Are you seeing more and more operations like this? Yeah, we are doing these increasingly frequently, and I guess it's normal for us as a surgical team to do maybe two to four a week. We're going to angle these scissors in so that the nasal mucosa doesn't ping back and just try and cut it as smoothly as possible. The piece of Rosa's palette that is cut away looks deceptively small. So this is the piece of palette that we've removed and because it's a muscle it's already um, contracted quite a bit so when it was actually in Rosa it was much bigger than this. But you can see it's actually pretty thick so it's about a centimetre and that was obviously hanging down at the back of her airway. I'm happy that the palette looks a much better length, like much more appropriate and it's looking quite neat like now that the stitches are going in. I think she's going to feel a lot better without that and dangling down in her airway. With the palette done, Linda is now going to widen Rosa's nostrils, which will also improve her breathing. If you're squeamish, I'd look away now. So if you want to cut about there. So you're just opening the nasal passage for a couple of millimetres? Yeah, so millimetres like make a big difference. Then we make sure that we take out a pyramid piece of nostril, so it's quite deep. So this is the last, last stitch now. So they're like little dissolvable stitches and they will usually stay in for about three weeks and then just come out. All right, it's like I think, plastic surgery, isn't it? Right, it sort of is, yeah. And I think ultimately both of them are a lot bigger. <laughs> so that was yes, the aim, right? Exactly. I'd let you work on my nose. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I can definitely see how that would have a no positive effect on Rosa. Thankfully, Rosa's procedures have both gone without a hitch and she's recovering well. Where do we go from here for Bulldogs? You know, what are we looking at for the future? It's become much more apparent recently that we need to do something for their welfare. Maybe thinking about introducing yeah. crossbreeding yeah. to try and, um, you know, increase the length of their nose and breeding schemes where they have to do an exercise test before they're allowed to breed. The sad reality is we can only do so much for Rosa, like things like her trachea, we can't change at all. Only breeding and selecting for breathing can help her or help future generations. Good girl. With a bit of luck, Rosa will now breathe easy. But with the incredible boom in the number of flat-faced dogs, operations like this will only become more common. But some breeders are now working towards a more healthier dog, and hopefully others will follow suit, prioritising well-being over looks. Earlier, we met Pippin and Purdy. Two tiny pups found virtually furless after being cruelly dumped in a garden by their owner. Come on, then. I do actually call them my little gremlins. It's an affectionate term, though. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, yeah. You OK? Thankfully, they don't look like gremlins anymore. They are back to being mogwise. Just five weeks after being rescued and looked after by animal care assistant Georgie Meeks, the transformation is unbelievable. When they first came in, they were almost completely bald, with just a few tufts of fur on their feet. What are you doing? But as you can see now, their fur growth is almost complete. Thanks to weekly medicated baths, these two have been given the all clear from mange. And they've had their puppy vaccinations too. Right, come on then, guys. And today, vet Andrea Westbourne will see if they can go up for rehoming. Hi. Uh, yeah. Okay, do you have a look at Purdy first? So they're eating, drinking fine. Absolutely, I love the food. No vomiting or diarrhea? No, nothing like that. But it seems Purdy has a common problem. So quite a lot of fur in the ears there, so they might need a little bit of plucking if they tolerate it. Ow! In long-haired breeds, fur can grow in the ears which, if left untrimmed, can cause problems and lead to inflammation and infection. So the ears need to be checked regularly and kept fuzz-free. That's better. Oh, she's fine. Let's have a little look at the little fella. 
That's fine, his little legs are fine. The hair growth is incredible, it looks lovely. So he's got a good coat there and no treatment needed. As you can see, the, the puppies have made a full recovery, are in good health and can be rehomed as soon as possible. Thank you very much, Andrea. See you again. Thanks, bye. They will make lovely pets. Very calm, nice little pups, very cute. We're going to go out. Apart from the garden they were found in, these two have had little experience of the outside world. Just going to put some jumpers on them. So with the added protection of some brightly patterned knitwear, for what could be the first time, they're about to go for a walk. I think they'll be terrified, but they'll soon learn to love it. <laughs> Won't you? We hate these jumpers. Should we go then? Right, we're we going to have a walk. Yeah? You ready for this? Ooh. Come on then. So far, so good. I thought they'd be a lot more wary than this and a bit frightened, but they seem to be handling it really well. Come on then. I've had enough. Come on, you two. Don't speak too soon, Georgie. No, this isn't. This isn't good. Come on. This way. That's it. Come on then. That's it. That's better. There we go. A collar and lead obviously aren't as easy to wear as a woolly sweater, so they take a bit of getting used to. Come on then. It's lovely for them to be out and about in the outside world, experience all new smells and different sights and textures on their feet and things. Nice chance for them to start being proper dogs out on a walk. It's great progress for Pippin and Purdy, and I bet it's not long before they find a forever home. Come on, Pippin. Come on, then. Coming up... Shall we go to the beach? We're catching up with three-year-old Phoebe, from a sad existence in a dirty shed to a cushy life as a pampered princess. She enjoys it. She loves it, doesn't she, girl? Yeah. And if your home is crying out for a rescue dog, we might just have the one for you. Please open the door! Earlier, two dogs, Patsy and Phoebe, were rescued from an illegal puppy trader. It's likely they've been used for breeding and were living in wet, dirty conditions. Little pug Phoebe was using a washing up bowl as a bed. You just want a bit of loving, don't you? Their owner pleaded guilty to six animal welfare offences and was sentenced to a 16-week jail term. He was disqualified from keeping dogs for life. And there's great news for Patsy and Phoebe. They've both found forever homes. Three-year-old Phoebe is now living with Chris and Nicola Musto and daughters Madeline and Chloe. Oh, she's been a good girl, haven't you? Yeah. She was just what Nicola was looking for. Well, my friend had rescued a pug from the RSPCA and um, I said to her, if any more come up, I'd really be interested. So when one did come up, she asked me if I would be interested in uh, rehoming her and I said, yes, definitely. Phoebe's settled in, but she has a few medical issues. She needs regular eye drops for keratitis. That's inflammation of her corneas. We don't think she can see very well. That's the biggest thing, isn't it? Mm. Um, she does run into things. She makes up for it in her, uh, her nose, doesn't she? Yeah. She smell food from five paces, can't she? Yeah, she does, yeah. Is it Din Din's time? And talking of food, she has a special diet to help her urinary condition. I mean, she, she eats twice a day. Just some special... Special dog food. Twice a day. Maybe that's what's causing the smelly farts. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> she can clear a room, can't she? she? Can clear, yeah, she does. She's very good at clearing a room. But they tend to happen when she barks. So it's like a bark. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> a part. A part. <laughs> or is it a fark? Either way, it's not her only unpleasant habit. She likes to clean the plates in the dishwasher. That's a favourite thing, isn't it? Jumping in the dishwasher to clean the plates. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows I do this. Naughty that, isn't it? Naughty. So tasty. Doggy me. Apart from that, it seems. Phoebe can do no wrong. She's very pampered. Very pampered Loved. princess. Aren't you? She deserves it after what she's been through. Got a lovely furry bed now, haven't you? Oh, she's clever. 
That cosy bed is a world away from sleeping in a washing up bowl in a dirty shed. Princess Phoebe also has a new wardrobe. She's got loads of outfits, everything's pink. So when I'm taking her for a walk and there's other blokes coming the other way, I tend to cross the road. <laughs> She's got to look posh. She's got a walkie. She's got a walkie. Come on. And when you've got a posh outfit, why not flaunt it? Come on, Papa. Phoebe loves a good day out at the beach, oh, even when it's snowy. She enjoys it. She loves it, doesn't she, girls? Yeah. Slow motion beach running a la Pamela Anderson. Lucky Phoebe deserves her second chance at a happy life. She's loved now. Yeah, she is. Is that one of the family? Come on, Papa. So how did things pan out for dumped duo Pippin and Purdy? The breeder who abandoned them claimed he'd tried to treat the skin problem himself and was inebriated when he left them in a garden. He was issued with a caution and also signed the pup's mother over to the RSPCA. And both these cuddly pups have gone on to find their forever homes. Fantastic. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. Oh, how are you doing? This is Shifey. He's a three-year-old Staffy Cross, and he's been here at the centre um, for just day for five months now. At first, we just couldn't understand why he was called Stripey, um, but he's literally got the tiniest patch of white gun right along his nose. Ready? Steady? Go! He is very energetic, obviously being a young staffy. This one, is it? Yay! He loves his walks and he takes it all in, so he sniffs everything, and he just really enjoys being out and seeing new things. He's looking for a home with someone that can just sort of give him a nice structure of routine. Stripey will need to be the only dog in the house. Just wants to sort of have all the love and affection to himself. Seeing Stripey go home and make me the happiest person on earth. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. After an emotional goodbye to a loved pet whose owner can't look after her anymore. Oh, like, uh, oh, it's dead sad, isn't it? I feel awful because she's going to be like searching for us tonight, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she will, yeah. Inspector Anthony Joins helps deaf Staffy Cross Isla begin a new life. Inspector Hershey Bowl deals with the aftermath of the biggest number of dogs being rescued from one house we've ever featured. We would move the washing machine and suddenly there'd be six faces looking at you. It was just incredible where they were able to hide. And we hear the extraordinary story of rescue dog Teddy, who helped bring his owner back to life. In a way, I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? Eh? <laughs>